the next point is they're destroying their own neighborhoods. What do you say to that? Yeah, this one, um, this one, uh, also really emerged largely in force, um, uh, in the sixties. Although I think, uh, someone on Twitter and I retweeted it. I can't, I can't remember their at right now, but I'll give them credit. Um, when I can, uh, you know, sort of imagined that on the plantation, you know, they're destroying their own plantation. They're destroying their own, or about prison prisoners rising up. They're destroying their own prison. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. it's absurd Mm -hmm. when we talk about it that way. Um, but they're destroying their own neighborhoods for some reason, um, has a lot more, um, hold on people, on people's minds. Um, I think the people who say, why are they destroying their own neighborhoods? You didn't see them coming out in support of the looting in New York that attacked Soho or the looting more recently in Chicago that attacked the Magnificent Mile. They didn't suddenly show up and go, oh, that's the looting I support because it's not really about that, right? It's mm-hmm. just a way of of, of um, disowning, disowning what they're doing. But it also is just a total confusion of geography and power. The fact that people live somewhere does not mean that they have power over their environment. In fact, it is precisely the fact that we have no power over our environment that causes us to want to riot and overthrow and and loot and attack. Um, and there's this this idea that you know that that somehow you know the the quick trip or the McDonald's or the gas station in my neighborhood is somehow like this this important part of it's part of my own community when in fact in all likelihood you know, I got sexually harassed there or my friend worked there and had his wages, you know, stiffed or, you know, I mean, we, people know what they're doing. They know what they're attacking. They know what their community is and what it isn't. I think ultimately, you know, and you, and you actually put your finger on this as I've been thinking about this around the release more and more, I'm convinced that all of these slanders come down to the fact that the people who are doing this don't really know what they're doing. They don't really know what they're doing. They're acting, you know, animalistically, primitively, um, you know, chaotically, they don't know what they're doing. And I think, um, you know, community liberals, liberals during times of, of quote unquote peace, liberals will happily say, oh, you know, a Walmart can't really be part of your community. Oh, a McDonald's isn't really part of your community. But when rioters say like, you're right, and they burn it down, suddenly liberals are horrified um, (laughs) that they're destroying quote unquote, their own community. Um, I also think this has a lot to do with, with, you know, and, and we're gonna, this is more granular, um, the way that um, black communities have significantly higher concentrations of fast food restaurants and chain stores. Um, they have more predatory pawn shops and lots, just lots more really, really predatory businesses in their, com- in their quote unquote communities um, in the places that they live. Um, but also in Minneapolis, uh, you know, we saw that there was this you know, there was a huge, huge amount of, of, of burning and looting. And there was a community bookstore that was in the middle, the very middle of the riot zone, totally untouched, not even a broken window. Hmm. You know, people know what they're doing. They know the businesses that are actually serving the community and the ones that are exploiting them and they act accordingly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, it just speaks to this not so subtle racist, internalization of that subject um which you know people again performatively are against racism but when it comes down to when it gets down to it when it goes down yeah. um it, it comes up it's fascinating uh it's disturbing and it needs to be obviously um not only just argued against but there needs to be actions taken against this uh way of approaching the subject but i think in these types of crisis situations i think especially now in the u.s i know that your book largely focuses around the united states um but in the u.s right now we're in the midst of so many overlapping crises with the public health crisis of covid the economic crisis people don't have jobs like all of the institutions that we're supposedly supposed to adhere to and respect are are failing and they have been failing for a long time but the cracks have widened so uh so much that it's just, it's so fast. It's like, I, I wonder, like, what line do people need to cross in their in their understanding of how things should work for them to be like, yeah, this rioting makes a lot of sense, actually. Um, but I really think we have, and I'm speaking to myself, there's so much of this that's been internalized. We have to remember, and I think this is something you approach as well, is that history is still having um, its way with us. I mean, we're not separate from it. And to think that 
we abolished slavery 150 years ago, technically, um, or that Jim Crow is over, or that we had a black president, or any of these things that we're now in a post-racial society, um, I, I just think that the the delusions are so thick. I just wonder what it will take for people to maybe get on board, and maybe we shouldn't even be holding our breath for that to happen. You know, I'm 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 a little more optimistic than that. I think on some level, um, I think. Okay. I, I haven't heard a lot of the post-racist argument, post-racial argument um, brought out since Ferguson, really. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe a little bit in the lull between, um, I think there has been really, I mean, one of the things that's so incredible about this uprising is that it's it's a black uprising. It's a it's a rebellion of, of, um, of, of black people in the U.S. against their treatment that is being joined in the streets by huge other swaths of the working class, um, lots of white folks, lots of, you know, all of the minorities of other other races and um, there's indigenous support, you know, you see indigenous action going on. There is this sort of mass character to it. Um, and all of them are saying black lives matter, you know, and I think there is this creep. Um, I think you're right. There is this creep into the language where a lot of leftists talk about it as a multiracial uprising, quote unquote, which is a way of not talking about the primacy of the black struggle in it. Um, and you have a lot of people sort of starting to, starting to go back into um, a standard way of not of not thinking about the race question quite properly or or or, or fully, but I also think that um, this moment um, has seen has seen a lot of people, and you know people are buying white fragility or whatever the fuck. But but this moment has also seen a lot of people um, um, really starting to shift. And I think you know you mentioned what would it take, and I and and earlier you talked about sort of in the first few days, how people were really supportive. I think when that police precinct got burned down, that was the first time that a police precinct was successfully taken and destroyed um, since, I believe, uh, since the police were invented in America. That was the first really successful that I'm aware of. And I, I've, I've gone back and I've looked. One was attacked during Watts um, in the 70s. Uh, a Hasidic group uh, took over a, a precinct in New York. Um, during the Holy Week riots, a few sort of got got damaged, um, but not fully taken over. It was 68, Holy Week riots of 68. Um, and a substation was attacked in LA in 92. But but again, like this precinct, sorry for the long the long technical footnote. But, um, no, no but, worries. But the, the, um, watching a precinct get evacuated and burned down, it shattered decades and decades of pro cop ideology that made them seem immortal. And, you know, a, like, you know, they've existed throughout history and they're invincible and they can't, you know, they're always there and they're always part of our society and there's nothing that can be done. They can only be reformed. Um, and I think it just suddenly made abolition possible and it, it, it shook everything briefly um, it shook everything to its core. And, and as the movement has slowed down, although it, it hasn't yet fully left the streets, which is incredible to me um, and, and, and largely unprecedented, um, it, it, you know, people are retreating back and a lot of the, you know, the Minneapolis plan to, to disband the police department has already fallen apart and all these sort of promises around abolition have, have collapsed. But, but I think that, that direct action, you know, um, uh, Huey P. Newton is very good on this in, um, in, in when he's talking about how, uh, how the Watts riots functions. And he says, you know, I'm going to get this quote a little wrong, but he says that the extent of the damage um, was such that it communicated to every other black community in the country, no matter what spin the police and the press tried to, take, tried to put on it, the damage and the, the fact of Watts communicated more clearly than any media expression. And I think we saw that with, with the third precinct. So, you know, do I mean, do I mean by that, 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 that the vast majority of American society is still completely shaped by white supremacy and anti-blackness and like racial structures of thought? No, absolutely not. We are, I mean, in that way, I am not optimistic about that. What I am optimistic <laughs> about is that the extent to which so many people are seeing their plight tied to the plight of black liberation, that, that mm. gives me some optimism. Yeah, thank you for clarifying that. And uh, <laughs> I tend to get, I, I, I don't know, I get carried away sometimes. No, no. Um, I mean, I, I, you're also not wrong. That's the thing. Yeah, right? you're also not yeah. wrong. White people are, are whiteness is a hell of a drug. You know. 